The Republic of Biak na Bato, Tagalog, Republica ng Biak na Bato, Spanish, Republica de Biac na Bato, officially referred to in its constitution as the Republic of the Philippines, Tagalog, Republica ng Pilipinas, Spanish, Republica de Filipinas, was the first republic ever declared in the Philippines by revolutionary leader Emilio Aguinaldo and his fellow revolutionaries. Despite its successes, including the establishment of the Philippines' first ever constitution, the republic lasted just over a month. It was disestablished by a peace treaty signed by Aguinaldo and the Spanish Governor-General, Fernando Primo de Rivera which included provision for exile of Aguinaldo and key associates to Hong Kong. Background the Republic of Biak na Bato was one of a number of unrecognized insurgent polities which existed during the time in which the Philippines was under Spanish colonial government as the Spanish East Indies. It was preceded and succeeded by two similarly unrecognized polities, the Tejeros government and the Central Executive Committee. Government the Constitution of the Republic of Biak, na Bato was written by Félix Ferrer and Isabello Artacho, who copied the Cuban Constitution of Jimaguayu nearly word for word. It provided for the creation of a Supreme Council, which was created on November 2, 1897, with the following as officers having been elected. History The initial concept of the republic began during the latter part of the Philippine Revolution, when the leader of the Katipunan, Emilio Aguinaldo, became surrounded by Spanish forces at his headquarters in Talisay, Batangas. Aguinaldo slipped through the Spanish cordon and, with 500 picked men, proceeded to Biak Nabato, a wilderness area at the town of San Miguel, Bulacan, now parts of San Miguel, San Ildefonso and Doña Remedios in Bulacan. When news of Aguinaldo's arrival there reached the towns of central Luzon, men from the Ilocos provinces, Nueva Ecija, Pangasinan, Tarlac, and Zambales renewed their armed resistance against the Spanish. Unable to persuade the revolutionaries to give up their arms, Governor General Primo de Rivera issued a decree on July 2, 1897, which prohibited inhabitants from leaving their villages and towns. Contrary to his expectations, they continued fighting. Within days, Aguinaldo and his men planned the establishment of a republic. Aguinaldo issued a proclamation from his hideout in Biak na Bato entitled, To the Brave Sons of the Philippines, in which he listed his revolutionary demands as the expulsion of the friars and the return to the Filipinos of the lands which they had appropriated for themselves, representation in the Spanish Cortes, Freedom of the press and tolerance of all religious sects. Equal treatment and pay for peninsular and insular civil servants. Abolition of the power of the government to banish civil citizens. Legal equality of all persons. On November 1, 1897, the Provisional Constitution for the Biak na Bato Republic was signed. The preamble of the Constitution included the statement that the separation of the Philippines from the Spanish monarchy and their formation into an independent state with its own government called the Philippine Republic has been the end sought by the revolution in the existing war, begun on 24 August, 1896, and therefore, in its name and by the power delegated by the Filipino people, interpreting faithfully their desires and ambitions, we, the representatives of the revolution, in a meeting at BIAC na Bato, November 1, 1897, unanimously adopt the following articles for the constitution of the state. By the end of 1897, Governor-General Primo de Rivera accepted the impossibility of quelling the revolution by force of arms. In a statement to the Cortes Generales, he said, I can take Biak na Bato, any military man can take it, but I cannot answer that I could crush the rebellion. Desiring to make peace with Aguinaldo, he sent emissaries to Aguinaldo seeking a peaceful settlement. Ironically, nothing was accomplished until Pedro A. Paterno, a known turncoat and a lawyer from Manila, volunteered to act as negotiator. On August 9, 1897, Paterno proposed a peace based on reforms and amnesty to Aguinaldo. In succeeding months, practicing shuttle diplomacy, Paterno traveled back and forth between Manila and Biak, Nabato, carrying proposals and counterproposals. Paterno's efforts led to a peace agreement called the Pact of Biak, Nabato. 
This consisted of three documents, the first two being signed on December 14, 1897, and the third being signed on December 15, effectively ending the Republic of Biak, Nabato, in 1899. Aguinaldo wrote in retrospect that the principal conditions of the pact were 1. That I would, and any of my associates who desired to go with me, be free to live in any foreign country. Having fixed upon Hong Kong as my place of residence, it was agreed that payment of the indemnity of $800,000 Mexican should be made in three installments, namely, $400,000 when all the arms in Biak na Bato were delivered to the Spanish authorities, $200,000 when the arms surrendered amounted to 800 stand, the final payment to be made when 1,000 stand of arms shall have been handed over to the authorities and the Te Diem sung in the cathedral in Manila as thanksgiving for the restoration of peace. The latter part of February was fixed as the limit of time wherein the surrender of arms should be completed. 2. The whole of the money was to be paid to me personally, leaving the disposal of the money to my discretion and knowledge of the understanding with my associates and other insurgents. 3. Prior to evacuating Biak Nabato the remainder of the insurgent forces under Captain General Primo de Rivera should send to Biak Nabato two general of the Spanish army to be held as hostages by my associates who remained there until I and a few of my compatriots arrived in Hong Kong and the first installment of the money payment, namely, $400,000, was paid to me. 4. It was also agreed that the religious corporations in the Philippines be expelled and an autonomous system of government, political and administrative, be established, though by special request of General Primo de Rivera these conditions were not insisted on in the drawing up of the treaty, the general contending that such concessions would subject the government to severe criticism and even ridicule. Legacy on November 16, 1937, a 2,117 hectares 8.17 square miles block in the Biak na Bato area was declared a national park by Manuel L. Quezon in honor of the Republic. In the 1970s, Ferdinand Marcos issued orders guiding mineral prospecting and exploitation in government reservation which impacted the park boundaries. On April 11, 1989, Corazon Aquino issued Proclamation No. 401, which redefined the boundaries of the Biak na Bato National Park. The proclamation set aside 952 hectares 3.68 square miles hectares as mineral reservation, 938 hectares 3.62 square miles hectares as watershed reservation and 480 hectares 1.9 square miles hectares as forest reserve. See also List of unofficial presidents of the Philippines Political history of the Philippines Notes References Agoncillo, Teodoro C. 1990-1960, History of the Filipino People, 8th ed. Quezon City, Garotec Publishing, ISBN 971-8711-06-6 Aguinaldo, Emilio, 1899. True Version of the Philippine Revolution. Authorama Public Domain Books Zaid, Sonia M., 1994, The Philippines, A Unique Nation, All Nations Publishing Co., ISBN 971-642-071-4 External links A complete collection of Philippine constitutions Biak na Bato Constitution in English Biak na Bato Constitution in Spanish Biak na Bato Constitution in Tagalog Natural Springs and Caves of Biak na Bato, FilipinasInsider.com Biak na Bato, waypoints.ph Biak na Bato, txt mania. Com.